Hey folks, I'm not long back from my trip to Bhutan. These days I'm spending almost half my year traveling and I'm spending a great deal of my time doing video work. Today I want to introduce to you my new video travel tripod, the Manfrotto B3 Live. Given that this is a travel tripod, I didn't want to just do some tests around the studio. I really took this out to festivals in all kinds of conditions, in the mud, in the rain, and put it through its paces as a real travel tripod will be. So looking back over the thousands of videos that I put out over the years, it was quite clear to me that the quality of my content when I'm traveling hasn't been at the level that it should be. I haven't been using appropriate equipment. I don't have a travel tripod before this one that has the fluid head. So my shots have either been really bumpy and shaky or static just sitting on a tripod. And I want to improve the overall you know, viewer's experience. So I have been looking for a travel video tripod. It was actually perfect timing. Manfrotto got in touch with me to tell me about the Be Free Live and offered that I could take it to Bhutan. Now, full disclosure, I've had an ongoing relationship with Manfrotto for years. You can see from my jacket, I've been wearing this one for about five years. And they sent this to me without charge. You know, I'm keeping this one. I want you to know that up front. Having said that, I want to go through and show you some of the footage I got with it and talk to you specifically about what I look for in a travel tripod. Okay, now first off, I want to talk to you about what I look for, and this has been built up over a couple of years, in a general travel tripod, before we even think about video. There's five main things. In order, what I look for is one, the weight. Two is how easy and quick it is to set up. Three is stability. Four is the compression ratio. And five is packing options. Now that might seem crazy to a lot of you. How can stability be number three? It's a tripod after all. I'll explain it to you. I'm talking specifically about travel tripods. If I'm looking for something to do long exposures or studio work, then it all changes. Based on my world travels and a lot of the guests that I have travel with me on my tours, tripods that are too heavy get left in the bus or left in the hotel all the time. I can't tell you how many people come on tours, bring a big fancy tripod with them for the whole trip and it gets used once or not at all. There's no point having a travel tripod if it's too heavy to actually you be bothered to take it out. The second one is how fast it sets up and packs down. So, so often you're at a situation where there's like a fantastic opportunity to film something or shoot something, you need your tripod. Being able to set the tripod up in 15 seconds rather than taking say two minutes can make all the difference between getting the shot and completely missing it. I have to say on this recent trip with a couple of the things that this one has be built into it, I was able to just set up and start going. In other situations, I would have just missed the filming or missed the shot. So the quick release legs and locking in that once they're locked, you know it's fully locked in, it's not gonna start slipping on you is a big thing. And the second thing I really like on this one, and a lot of tripods have this these days, most of them in Frodo's do, is some kind of mechanism at the top which dictates the angle of the leg. But they're often fiddly or not that clear. This one's so easy. If it's set to the middle setting, they're set up ready to shoot. So if you have them in the middle setting or you just quickly check, okay, middle, 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 pull all the legs out until they stop, they're going to be evenly spread out. Job done. If you click them to the left, that's where they're set up to actually be invertible. So if we collapse the leg, then the leg can actually invert for packing, which is the next, well, a later one we're going to talk about, letting you bring it right down. So quite handy. The second one uh, I was talking about is compression ratio. So that's how high can it stand up, like this guy, and then how small can it pack down once you invert everything and pack it up. That's a big one, especially because for me at least, when I'm traveling, I may have it in a bag over my shoulder for most of the day, 
but when I'm traveling, I actually check it into the hull. So I'll put it in my check-in check luggage. So the ability to pack it down nice and small so it's not taking too much space is great. And that leads into packing options. If it comes with a little carry bag is fantastic that's specially made for the size. Again, doesn't take too much space, can provide some kind of protection, and it stops the dirty, muddy feet that you may have gotten on the tripod from touching the other stuff in your bag. Okay, so let's talk specifically about video options now and what you wanna look for in a travel tripod for video. Now, on top of those five, I think there's two more. Well, there's two that really are important to me anyway. One is the payload and two are the controls that it gives you and the fine controls that you're able to adjust. Now, payload, I mean, what will the head itself actually support to give you nice fluid movement? Okay, now fluid movement I'm talking about to give you a nice smooth pan. Panning is when we're turning from left to right, for example, like a panorama, and you're, you're keeping the horizon nice and level and you get a nice smooth shot. And then you've got your tilt, which is the up and down movement to get different angles on your shot. They're both quite important. Now, when you're using a big heavy setup, that's when you're going to notice the most camera shake, especially if it's a long lens. But often a, a tripod legs may say it supports some crazy amount of weight, but if the head doesn't, it won't give you nice smooth movement because it'll be starting to shudder under the weight. Now this one is rated to four kilos or 8.8 .8 pounds. May not sound like a heap, but my Nikon D5 and 70 to 200 weighs under three kilos. So even adding mics and everything, we're still well under the stated range. And I shot with that combo a lot. Taking a look here at some footage, this is using that combo, and here's the resulting images, nice and smooth as we're panning through the shot and getting some movement in there without the shuddering. Now, hand holding it, you can see it's just really difficult. And as I said, it is those longer lenses where you're going to see the, the impact the most. And it's at those heavier cameras that, you know, for a 10 second shot, you may be able to hold it nice and steady to move. But at the end of a day, when you've been using the rig all day, you may find that your shots just get worse and worse throughout the day because you don't have the support of the fluid head. Okay, now in terms of controls, I already talked about the different setup options on this that help you get up and shooting really quickly, but for video, there's another one. So as I already said, this one separates out the tilt and the pan mechanism into two different uh, locking mechanisms. So that's one is really handy because if you just undid one and then it let everything go, it's basically a ball head. So you might be trying to turn left and right and find that it's falling forward because of the heavy lens you have on. Now, another thing is that these give you kind of a tension effect. So if you tighten it all the way up, then tilting up and down is locked off. Or if you tighten the pan off, then panning left and right is locked off. But if you just let it off a little bit, then it still gives you a, a lot of resistance for a nice smooth slow pan. If you loosen it more, then it moves more freely. And if you loosen it right up, then you can really pan a, or a tilt as quickly as you want. Now, something this video tripod has that a lot of the ones I've seen actually don't, and I really found useful, is that it's got this mechanism for leveling built into the head. Okay, so imagine you don't have that, and you've set up your video shot, and you find it's not level, so then you need to be adjusting the length of one of the legs to try and compensate for the non-level ground to get everything right. It's a pain. For this one, you just screw this center mechanism, and then you can see on the top when it's nice and perfectly level. You lock it down knowing that that's level. That now won't move, so now when I do my pan, whatever angle of tilt I'm at, the horizon's going to stay straight. If you didn't, imagine you have that 
off on an angle and then you do a tilt, the horizon's gonna go weirdly through your shot and not give you the results that you want. So for me, I found that really helpful and the fact that the bubble level is off to the side, away from the camera, not hidden under the actual bottom of the camera like so many tripods I've owned. Once you put the tripod, the camera on the tripod, you can no longer see the bubble level. Or having it on the top of the legs also can be misleading. So having it here right below on the head, you know that everything's gonna be level. Okay, now in terms of the weight, if you have one of the Manfrotto B Freezer already, the, the stills version, this is heavier. You know, you can't get away from it. Look at the head. It's significantly bigger and more complex than the stills head. So it's going to be a bit heavier. And this one that I'm using is aluminum or aluminium, not the carbon version. They don't make a carbon one just yet. No doubt that'll come eventually. And carbon tends to save you about 20% over the aluminium version. But as I said, I didn't find an issue with it. I there were never days where I was thinking I would leave it behind, especially with the little carry bag that you can tuck it into and throw over your shoulder. It's not a great added weight and it wasn't a problem for me on this last trip anyway. So look, I can see that the footage I got on this last trip is improved. Shots that otherwise would have been static just sitting on a standard tripod or that would have been jerky with me trying to handhold it or make movements on a, a normal ball head tripod now have a nice smooth amount of fluid motion to them and i hope that you know as i take this on future trips you're going to see my travel videos increasing in quality and getting more dynamic with nice fluid motion now before i show you some more footage that i got in bhutan just a little plug i am traveling so much these days because i run photo tours around the world i was just in bhutan i'm going again in may 2017 and we've got tours planned all the way through to 2018 already. If you go to mattgranger.com forward slash workshops, I've got things coming up for Namibia and Ethiopia and Iceland and, as I said, Bhutan. And we've got other ones in the work, including to more places in Asia, back to Australia, through America for a really special event. So if you want to get involved, jump on over to the workshops page. There's some EOIs up there that you can check out. Thank you for watching. Here's a little bit of footage that I took whilst in Bhutan.